Picture this, a paralegal pastes client's NDA into a free AI tool, clicks summarize and emails it back to the client. Privilege is gone, confidentiality is compromised and malpractice risk immediate. This isn't hypothetical. I see this happening right now inside of the law firms I work with and it's called shadow AI. And unless you take control, your firm is one casual prompt away from disaster. So in this video, I'll give you four compliance checks every law firm needs if anyone on your team is touching AI, even informally. I'm Rook, founder of MPL Legal Tech Advisors. With a background in engineering compliance systems in finance, we now consult legal teams adopting AI and process automation safely by putting governance, processes and people first. Let's jump into the four checks. Compliance check number one. Where is AI already being used in your firm? Most partners think we don't use AI, but when we run audits and assessments, the reality is very different. Associates brainstorming arguments into ChatGPT or Claude, paralegals summarizing depositions with AI note takers, admins drafting client emails in Copilot. It's not malicious, it's pressure. Associates under deadlines, paralegals working weekends, and juniors trying to be efficient. But here's the problem. If you don't know where AI is already being used, you cannot supervise the risks. If you want this mapped out for your law firm, this is exactly what we do at L Legal Tech Advisors. Book a free consultation call. You'll find the link in the description below. Compliance check number two. Has your team been trained on what is safe and what is not? Right now, employees are making some dangerous assumptions. If it's just a draft, it's fine. If I strip the client name, confidentiality won't be an issue. And if AI double checks me, it must be accurate. Every one of these is a myth. A draft entered into a public AI tool is often retained and used to train further AI models. OpenAI, Meta, Amazon, and all others do that by default. And some of them retain data indefinitely. Second, stripping names is not enough. The fact patterns in the text can re-identify the client. And that's privileged information too. And AI doesn't know when it's wrong. Hallucinations are not a failure mode. They're a feature of how these systems predict text. Now courts have already sanctioned attorneys for submitting AI-generated filings with fictitious citations. Pennsylvania's joint formal opinion 4-200 directly addresses this risk. Warning lawyers to verify all AI-generated legal research and citations before relying on them. Yet, we still see fake citations slipping into work products, even when warned not to. Because policies alone aren't enough. Without training, your team will keep on filling the gaps with guessing. Compliance check number three. If an AI-generated error slips into a work product, who catches it? AI is confident when it's wrong. It's also subtle. If there's no documented checkpoint between AI generating a draft and client delivery, malpractice is already built into your process. American Bar Association, Formal Opinion 512, under Model Rule 1.1, states that competence includes understanding the risks and the benefits associated with generative AI. But here's the kicker. West Virginia's Legal Ethics Opinion 2401, a refusal to provide competent legal representation to clients. So you're damned if you use AI and you're damned if you don't. And if you can't show a review workflow, don't expect sympathy when the error reaches a client or the court. The safeguard is simple. AI outputs must be reviewed like the junior associates work, consistently and with the documentation. Compliance check number four. Are your AI tools compliant with your confidentiality obligations. Even so-called secure tools can carry hidden risks. Ask yourself, does this AI provider store or reuse prompts for further training? Can vendor staff or its contractors access my data? And where geographically is data stored and processed? Because here's the reality. If you're using a US cloud provider, even with the EU servers, that does not guarantee GDPR compliance. Under the Cloud Act, US authorities can demand access. That happened in Norway and that happened in Canada. In both cases, Microsoft prioritized US Cloud Act and not the country's sovereignty. Look it up. Another part of the reality is that many legal AI tools are just prompt wrappers around public AI models. If the underlying model isn't private, neither is the wrapper. On top of that, there's a middleman now sitting between you and where the data eventually travels. 
exposing your data to further processing. And the third one, consumer-grade tools, often keep your chat data for months or longer. That creates a permanent record that could be hacked, subpoenaed, or exposed. American Bar Association's Formal Opinion 512, under Model Rule 1.6, states that lawyers must protect all client information when using generative AI tools. Florida's Opinion 241 goes further, requiring lawyers to research AI providers, security policies on data retention, data sharing, and self-learning before use. If you can't answer these questions with confidence, you cannot guarantee confidentiality, and you're violating your ethical obligations. Now that you know what to ask, let's pull back the curtain on what's actually happening with your data behind the scenes. Because this is where most legal teams get blindsided. Let's go with OpenAI first. So deleting the conversation doesn't mean your conversation is actually gone. Normally, OpenAI purges deleted chats after 30 days, but there's a major catch. If there's an active litigation, like the current New York Times lawsuit, OpenAI is legally required to keep all the conversations, even the ones you deleted, until the case wraps up. So your supposedly deleted client information could be sitting on their servers for years. The only way around this is with their enterprise or zero data retention plans, where your prompts and outputs could be excluded from the storage. Let's move on with Microsoft Copilot. I get a lot of questions lately from lawyers and from partners asking what's the deal with Microsoft Copilot? Can we upload sensitive information? Consumer version, your prompts and completions, so your chats, may be stored for 30 days for security review and yes, may be used for troubleshooting and debugging, even though they're not supposed to be used for model training. Somebody looks at your data. Your data leaves your environment and sits on Microsoft servers. But if you're on Copilot for Microsoft 365 Enterprise, it's a whole different story. Your prompts and chats never leave your organization's tenant environment, which is more or less under your control. And they're never used to train the models. So that's a strict isolation. Your data stays within your walls. And that's as secure as you can get with a cloud provider. Now, if you really want to go beyond that, the only way to go about it is offline. But think about it. Do you already use cloud services? Sometimes it makes sense to take a third party provider if you trust them, but you can't trust them if you don't look deep enough. Let's move on to Anthropic Cloud. It's another major AI provider. And on standard plans, Anthropic may hold your data for 90 days for abuse detection, unless you have negotiated something shorter. But if you're on an enterprise contract, you can enable zero retention privacy mode, which means your prompts and completions, so your chats, are not stored after the delivery. And the delivery is AI giving you a response. By default, Anthropic doesn't use your data for model training, and this can be made explicit in the enterprise contract. And now here's a big one that nobody talks about. Even if you pick the right plan, your data might still be shared with the third party providers. Who's that? Those are the providers of the services to your AI provider. Imagine OpenAI works with an advertising agency, a marketing agency. They will be sharing and using the information they're gathering with your chats with that company that provides them services. Now, that company has further contractors and further third-party services. So you can imagine when somebody asks me in an audit, where does my data go? Well, how long do you have? Now, every provider's compliance is as strong as its weakest link. So its weakest subcontractor. So you're not just auditing OpenAI or Microsoft, you're going beyond that. You're also responsible for their vendors and sometimes their vendors' vendors. The takeaway, consumer plans are compliance nightmare. Enterprise plans give you more control. But if you really want to get serious, and here is where you need to really weigh your options, the only way is offline and you have many options there. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a dedicated video on this topic. If you've watched this far, you're already ahead of most managing partners telling themselves, our people are not really using AI. They are, quietly. And unless you take control, you'll only find out when something goes wrong. So here's your next step. Download the free Legal AI Governance Quick Starter Check below. It gives you the exact questions and red flags to spot hidden retention risks, 
litigation holds and third-party exposures. Or, if you want clarity first, this is exactly what we do at MPL Legal Tech Advisors. Book a free AI risk consultation, you'll find the link in the description. This isn't about chasing the hype or FOMO. This is about protecting your clients, your license and your reputation. Subscribe for more insights like this and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.